right there. All right, hello and welcome to another um, YouTube watercolor painting tutorial. This is Andrew Broussard, and today I'll be demonstrating on some Bockingford tinted paper. So it's a quarter sheet, about 11 by um, 15. I'm going to soak this with water with a medium hate brush since I paint wet and wet. And then um, I'll tell you about the palette setup and what I have in mind for painting on this one. Okay. So usually I use the Stonehenge Aqua. Um, I believe Bockenford is the only tinted paper I really know about. I think Arches has some paper that is um, brightened. So I think there's some um, options with Arches, but I think it has to do with brightness. And that's, that's my extent of the knowledge with the paper in regards to this. So this is, I think it's either the cream or the oatmeal color. Um, I had ordered them and I wasn't the easiest for me to tell the difference between the two. So that's, um, it's one of those, uh, cream colors. It's not laying down perfectly flat for me. And I am going to have a little bit of struggling just because it's a different paper that I'm used to. And I think that happens with most people. You fall into a comfort zone with paper and then you, um, anytime you switch anything up, it just gets a little weird. So I'm going to focus on the Ron Ranson palette, which is going to be the Light Red Oxide, the Elizabeth Crimson, the Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Lemon Yellow, Ultramarine, and Payne's Gray. I'll probably add in some Thala Blue. That just helps me um, get some different greens and different darks. And if I add anything else in as we go, I'll make note of it. So let's just jump into it. Two days ago, I did a sketch of a um, master painting from the 1871 by Jasper Francis Cropsey. It was uh, Lake George. And there's a few things that st stood out color-wise, so I might try and, um, and see what happens with that. Color-wise, composition-wise. This is raw sienna. As you can see, my paper is not wanting to lay flat. I'm not sure if Bockingford paper is cotton. I don't know if it's 100% the alpha cellulose. Right. Grab some alizarin. Marine. I should have put a little down here. I'm just putting colors in. Ultramarine. Got the lizard and mix. Lay down flatter. Okay. Let's try a little bit of just a little bit of lifting, see how it looks for y'all.
We'll leave it at that. Let's do a dry off and then we'll start um, painting in. some more. It's almost a complete dry off. There's some areas that are still damp and um, I'm giving some issues. So. Okay. I'm going to go right into a background hills. I'm going to take kind of the gunk that's already on this, grab some ultramarine, that light red oxide for a distant purple. And we're going to play around with um, mountains and we're going to have fall colors on the side. Like I said, we're going to be kind of referring to that Jasper Francis Cropsey painting. So I'm just going to put in the shape of this mountain. And this is imaginary, just making up this shape right here. That's the far one. Bring down a little bit of reflection for these guys in the water. And do the same thing on this side. Now, uh, with the wet and wet, uh, sorry, the wet in this spot, if I was doing another layer of um, mountain, I would start having some blurring taking effect and I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do here is mix a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm grabbing way too much. I'm going to feed this into this wet here just to warm it up a little bit. And then the next one when we put it in will recede a little bit further back. All right, next I'm going to take raw sienna and ultramarine, mix those two for a foreground mass. The reason I'm just jumping to this is because this guy is still wet and I don't want to keep on just drying off, drying off nonstop and um, killing y'all's ears with the blow dryer. Okay, so that mass is going in. And we can feed some different tones into it. Let's go grab a little bit of Payne's Gray.
Okay, let's do a quick dry off. I'm going to take, I think this is a number four script rigger. We'll get a light mix of ultramarine blue and our um, light red oxide. This will be for far distant mountain, mountains. can bring that reflection down in here. So the main thing with the mountains is just playing back and forth with warm and cool. I am going to take this guy, let's take a little bit of um, Payne's Gray with uh, Lemon Yellow. Get a little bit of a green from that. And we'll feed some masses along here, the idea of groups of trees. This might not show up in the final bit. I have a feeling I'm going to paint the foreground over this. But it's just to kind of give you an idea of how we can strengthen up this uh, water line right here. It's just a few gestural strokes. If I want, I could put some Payne's Gray to really accentuate that. Okay, now the thing that was really interesting in um, the painting that I had sketched was that we had an increasing mountain mass come towards us and it went kind of, let's say, this fashion. So I'm going to increase here and bring towards, but then the foremost was actually um, a tree outcropping. So I thought that was really interesting composition, changing from one to the other. So I'm gonna mix up, um, just kind of what I have there already. Let's do another mountain range up front. Since it's coming towards us, and it's going to cast quite the shadow. Yeah, I'll just dry brush the shadow for this one. And I can bring that dry brush along. All right. Now, on top of this, I'm going to have a more vibrant color as we get closer to make a kind of tree edge right in this area. On this side, I also want to experiment with some uh, vibrant tree color as well. So let's, um, let's see what we can do for kind of fall colors. Kind of gravitating towards the light red oxide and um, the burnt sienna. So I'm gonna feed those in with the hake textured wise. We'll see what we come up with. I usually wet and wet the shape in first, but um, I didn't really push the wet and wet stage too far here. So this will be the one side. Mix some ultramarine into it.
the shape of this one's pretty uninspiring, so I'm gonna have to make the surrounding trees interesting and inspiring. Here is the dark shadow mass. Um, every one of the Hudson River Valley paintings that I look at, it's just, there's, there's a lot going on in the foreground, but it doesn't bring your eye to it. And I think it's because of the uh, subtle tonal changes that take place in the foregrounds of those paintings. And this is Payne's Gray that I'm using to blend this mass. If we want, we could play around with scraping in here. The mat would come about to this edge, so this guy's just going to come off a little bit. And we'll move over with the uh, trees. Okay. Now, I'm going to rinse. brush pull off let's get some raw sienna for our closer group of trees that I was talking about bring that reflection down See how much I can try to make this pop. Oh, two things. So I ordered um, some different gouache colors. As you know, I've been doing the exploration with uh, portrait painting, and I think gouache might be the way to go to to learn that. Uh, and then. I, yeah, so I ordered that. I think that'll be, be interesting, be fun. And a good, you know, addition to the, to the channel. Payne's Gray. For the shadow backside. I'm gonna take this, go along this back, bring shadows down, and just play around with it. You don't have to do this part, this is just experimentation right here. And of course, you're always welcome to follow along with these paintings. I'm mixing a little bit of that Payne's Gray into the Raw Sienna mix just to see if I can change the, t um, the warmth and the coolness of it to help this recede back. I'll take lemon yellow. And just feed that in here. Let this extend out. Oh, wait. Right. Uh, my normal spiel. I have the Patreon link down below if you're ever interested in um, supporting this channel. And if you don't want to, that's totally fine. I completely understand. If you're not capable of doing that, I completely understand as well. Um, I just enjoy you guys watching and leaving comments and asking questions on the YouTube. But uh, anything that you donate on the Patreon goes towards art supplies. Okay, let's do a dry off.
I have somebody in the live chat that um, just got in and said hello. So I'm saying hi back to them. Um, how y'all doing out there? With this, I'm experimenting with um, Bockingford tinted paper, which is different than my normal paper. So um, when you kind of get in the flow of things with a one watercolor paper, you start to, if you try anything different, it kind of throws you off. And the Bockingford paper, I believe, is 100% alpha cellulose as opposed to 100% um, cotton. I didn't dry off that good over here. I'm kind of rushing through this painting so that the filming doesn't take too long. It's loosely based off of a painting from 1871 by Jasper Francis Cropsey. Two days ago, I did a uh, pen and ink sketch of the, um, the painting that I'm talking about that we're kind of loosely basing this off of. And um, I don't have a picture of it in front of me. I'm just kind of doing it from imagination, a few things that stood out. I find that doing sketches of masterworks force you to kind of like sit there and stare at it for a long time. But it also, um, as you start seeing important elements that they used. And here, the important elements that kind of popped out that I'm playing around with are, um, it was interesting because there was a autumn color and an autumn color uh, framing the scene. So I was playing with that. But this mountain range and the mountains were all over the place. But the one that I just started developing a little bit, and I can play around with it more and start shaping it out. I'd use the hake brush to put this one in. Was that it came towards us, and as it came towards us, it uh, got warmer in value and color. And what he did was he went from mountain, with just loose shapes, and brought it into a um, forest mountain um, tree scene right there closer which was very interesting. That was a buildup of shapes, but there was a transition of what the shapes were, like a loose mountain to just trees. So I wanted to play around with that, and that kind of affects our depth here. So there's a few things that are going on. Let's switch to the hake. Now, like I said, usually when I put the foliage in, I'll put it in wet and wet at first to get that um, shape taking place. And we'll get a diffusion, like a light coming through it. That didn't happen with this one as these um, this paper is you know, a little bit new to me. I have played around with it in the past, but it has been um, quite some time. I can let this extend in front. We're gonna have to hit this tree line again. Right now it just looks a little too uh, blah. And with uh, trees, there's two things you always wanna kinda of keep in mind. For me, with watercolor, I can trace back over those tree trunks if I needed to darken it or um, trace along the outside to give me a little bit more depth, a little bit more feel of an effect to them. While I can also trace alongside them, especially uh, branches, and not overlap, and that gives me a uh, 3D effect where I have the lighter branches which will seem to recede into the page or to get um, to catch light. And then I could have darker ones, which seem to come forward and potentially be in shadow or have more mass to them. Now this paper I think is 140 pound paper, just like the normal paper I use, 
the buckling. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. It might be, like I said, the composition of the paper not being cotton. It just doesn't want to seem to relax. So there might be some sort of trick that people utilize to relax their paper. We'll come back over these guys with more foliage. All right, let's do a dry off. This is uh, Payne's Gray mixed with raw sienna to get a dark, but has a slight greenish push to it. And this is to create that closer foliage. And I'm gonna dry brush for its reflection down into the water. I'm gonna take the side of the rigger that shoreline foliage. And I'm just going to go straight in for Payne's Gray. Mixed for the underside and the backside of these trees where they're going to catch less light, so they're going to be darker. When I was thinking about this one, I was also thinking about uh, white gouache and mixing it with our um, lemon yellow and using that. And it might, it might wind up happening. We'll see. trees in there. Okay. I want to darken these guys up more, more silhouette. Gray. I can mix that with the burnt umber. I haven't really utilized that in this painting. Now, I'm going to keep it dark down here. I'm just going to do a little bit of textured stuff. stand up and take a look. It does have an interesting feel to it. You can definitely tell um, if, you, if you know my paintings that this is on tinted paper.
surface texture. Now the big debate is, do I play around with um, gouache? And let's see, do I have any out? I do have some gouache right here that I can reconstitute as I fling water and droplets all over. I do want to take, I'm going to take a light, light wash, put an even further mountain in. I just feel like the center is lacking. I need to add a little bit more in there. is not the color direction we really wanted to go in, but come back here. All right, um, you can always, once again, feed wet and wet and get some variation back in there. But I digress from our gouache experiment. So let me do a dry off and we'll play with the gouache and then we'll say we're done. Okay, now with gouache, I put it in a separate pan because it has a chalky effect to it and it very easily contaminates everything else on the palette. So I have gouache and I have buff titan right there. We're going to use the white gouache. So what I prefer to do is either put paint directly in this other spot or bring it in. This is lemon yellow and then bring that in. So this prevents me from getting it on the brush and then putting it back on the palette. And let me take some of the water out. I'm going to grab this other rigger just to grab some alizarin. Bring that in. And that lets me kind of put these brighter colors on top of those darks. So it lets you work in that. Um, so with watercolor, they often say work light to dark. This will let you kind of regress and go in the back direction if you have too much um, dark there. So a fun little experiment, fun little addition to it. Now, 
could have always add somebody fishing. We could always add little birds in the sky. So I'm just going to do a little birds. We'll do a dry off. We'll put a mat over it. We'll sign it and we'll call it done. So we'll return to this paper in the future, to um, the Bakkenford paper that's tinted and we'll experiment with it. I'll research um, better ways to get it to lay down and not buckle as much. We'll continue experimenting with this compositional shape. I think it's a really good, interesting one. Um, where we have the mountain range come towards us and the water come through. Some things need to be tweaked. It's, uh, it's a little off. Um, once again, we'll continue with uh, warm and cool colors. So there's a lot of things that we talked about in this that need to be expanded upon. But I hope you enjoyed. And uh, you know, please like, subscribe, comment. And I will see you all soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.